Arthur MacDonald's chartreuse Kate Muddler provides an interesting twist on a classic sea trout and brown trout lock pattern. So take the black tying thread and run it on just behind the eye, locking the loose end in place, and snip the loose end off, and then carry the thread down the shank in close turns. From a spool of flat silver mylar tinsel, cut a length and cut one end to a point, and then catch it in with a few turns of thread. Then take hold of the tinsel and wind it up towards the thread to form the tag. Secure the loose end and then trim off the waist. To form the tail, take a small golden pheasant crest feather, strip away the soft fibres from its base, then offer it up to the hook, catch it in with a couple of turns of thread. Then take a length of fine silver wire or silver tinsel, offer that up to the hook in a similar fashion, and then catch that in. Then secure the waist ends along the shank before trimming away the waist. Then take the thread back down the shank. Now the body comprises a pinch of black seal's fur. So take a pinch and offer it up to the thread and start to dub it on with a simple finger and thumb twist. Once the fur has been formed into a rope, begin to wind it from the base of the tail up towards the eye until about two thirds of the shank has been covered. Now a black hen hackle is used to form the body hackle. So remove a feather from the cape and strip off the waist fibres at the base, then offer the hackle up to the hook and catch it in place immediately in front of the body with two or three tight thread wraps. So with the hackle caught in, grasp its tip using a pair of hackle pliers and then apply a single turn immediately in front of the body. From that point, continue winding the hackle down over the body in evenly spaced turns until it reaches the base of the tail. With the hackle pliers still in place, keeping the hackle tip under tension, take the silver rib and begin winding it up through the hackle, making sure that each turn of the rib sits against the body and doesn't trap any of the fibers. Keep winding the tinsel in evenly spaced turns until it reaches the front of the body, at which point the loose end can be secured with a few turns of thread. And then the waist ends of the tinsel and hackle can be removed along with the hackle tip. Select a long fibred Cree hackle and prepare it in the same way as the body hackle and catch it in just in front of the body. Grasp the tip with a pair of hackle pliers and then apply two turns. Secure the tip and then trim off the waist. Finally, just stroke those fibers back and secure them with thread. 
With the collar hackle in place, take a small pinch of chartreuse deer hair, offer it up to the hook, and catch it in place with a couple of tight thread turns, and then lock it in with a few more, and then carefully trim off the waist. Next come the cheeks, which are made up of a small jungle cock feather, which has been split in half. So catch the first half in on the near side of the hook, a couple of thread turns, then add the second half to the far side of the hook. Again, lock them in place, and then trim off the waist. The final step is to add the brown deer hair muddler head. So take a generous pinch and offer it up to the hook, then apply a couple of loose turns and then pull tight so that the hair spins around the hook. Work the thread through the hair, working towards the eye. Once the thread has reached the eye, carefully draw the hair back, apply a couple of turns of the thread, and then apply a three-turn whip finish, draw it tight, and then trim off the loose end. The final stage now is to take the scissors and just simply start trimming away the hair to create the classic muddler head. Keep trimming the hair a little at a time until the muddler head has been created. And that's it complete, the Chartreuse Kate Muddler.